This literally took me 1,393 attempts to beat. What's going on guys? So when I first started playing Diablo 4, I set three main goals for myself. Number one, complete the main storyline. Number two, reach level 100. And number three, beat Uber Lily. So the most fun I had came in the early levels during the main storyline, where I was finding gear upgrades often and planning my build as I acquired more skill points and eventually paragon points. However, once I reached level 70, the upgrades slowed. I also started to realize there was no real end game. I originally thought tier 4 would unlock actual crafting with all the ingredients and gems I'd collected. However, I was extremely disappointed to learn aside from socketing gear and crafting elixirs that I really never use, there was no crafting system. At this point I saw no true end game, but I continued on improving my Shadow Clone AoE build to more quickly achieve my second goal of reaching level 100. Once I reached level 80, I kept on the Sigil dungeon grind, gaining Paragon points and upgrading my Glyphs. I also started prioritizing movement abil abilities and AoE shadow damage to expedite my dungeon clearing speed. Once I reached level 90s, I was doing level 50 dungeons in about 5-10 to 10 minutes, depending on the objectives. In addition, I'd mix in some Helltides to acquire Forgotten Soul so I could enchant slightly better gear I'd find along the way. After hundreds of dungeons, I was finally able to reach level 100. And at this point, I was very happy with my build as I had over 18,000 life, 8,000 armor, and uh, really solid damage reduction with my skills and the Paragon bonuses. I figured Uber Lilith wouldn't be too difficult with all my maxed out gear and glyphs. However, after my first few attempts, I quickly realized the majority of my existing gear, skills, aspects, Paragon, and glyphs that were even maxed out were basically useless. Even with a high life, armor, and damage reduction, I was still being one-shot by most of the mechanics of the fight. So in reality, I learned I could swap many of these defensive stats and abilities for offensive ones. However, I would then need to learn how to physically avoid getting hit by these one-shot abilities. Now I figured this would take many deaths after the first few attempts, and many expensive repair bills, almost about 300 to 400 uh, thousand every time I repair as I learned how to avoid these mechanics through trial and error. I had over 100 million gold at the start of this challenge, which I thought would be more than enough. I was wrong. So now, if you just want to be entertained by my 1000 plus deaths, and maybe learn a little bit along the way on the boss fight, keep watching. You won't be disappointed. So, let's start at the beginning here. After reaching level 100, I went straight to Uber Lilith without changing any of my skills or anything like that. Uh, so on my first, first, first attempt, I did some damage, then dodge rolled straight into double demonic waves, one-shotting me instantly. Second attempt, I dodged the double demonic waves, because I knew I had no shot of uh, tanking them, and I was one-shot by this random volatile blood postule, as they postule, as they call them. I'll just call them blood blister. Number nine attempt, tried it killing blood blister, got one-shotted by double waves. So just remembering both those things was difficult enough early on. Then number 10, I had a new mechanic. Uber Lilith flew up in the air, then unleashed a four-wave pattern, and I had no idea how to avoid it. Instantly died. Attempt number 12, tried to kill one of those blood blisters, then avoid the pattern, only to dash out of the circle and die. Another one shot. If you get out of the circle, you die instantly, pretty much. Attempt 30, I learned how to get behind the middle wave pattern, or the four wave pattern, which was progress for me. And the very next attempt on 31, I almost got Uber Lilith to uh, pass two thirds life, which was a big milestone for me. And I learned I shouldn't be in the middle of the ring when Lilith takes flight. You gotta be on the outside, and then dash across. Attempt 83, I finally got her down to less than two thirds life as I switched to poison movement for more single target damage. However, I got excited and forgot to get away from the middle after she took flight, and I died to the four-wave pattern once again. Attempt 84. I improved my ability to recognize the four-wave pattern, and I actually avoided it with dash. This is probably one of the, the few times I did early on. Then on attempt 101, I was uh, more consistently making it to the second uh, phase of the first part, which was the two demonic enforcer wave, around like 50% life, which was... Pretty, pretty cool, but I couldn't kill them because I had no idea how to avoid everything at once. 
103, I learned more about the stagger mechanics and actually staggered Lilith for the first time. I also had to do more dungeons to get more crowd control aspects to be able to achieve the stagger. By attempt 112, I spent over 10 million gold at this point on repair bills, respecting my skills and Paragon, as well as enchanting, upgrading, and applying new aspects to my gear for poison imbuement from Shadow, as well as improved crowd control for the stagger. 134. I understood most of the early mechanics, but I still forget certain things sometimes, such as focusing on staggering the boss, but forgetting about the blister, which I learned on my second overall attempt. But you, you tend to forget these things as new mechanics and uh, goals are added in the fight. Attempt 297. I finally got Lilith to 50% in Phase 1, but all these attempts were taking a toll on my bank, so in between repairs I do Hell Tides or Sigil Dungeons to get poison gear upgrades or aspects, as well as just vendorable items I can sell for gold. 351. I've, I finally collected a few hundred obols from the uh, the events and things I've done um, in between Lilith fights, and I gambled some daggers in hopes of getting the Bursting Venom Axe aspect, which is critical for this build, and it essentially allows you to use unlimited poison movements, stacking ridiculous amounts of poison damage over time. Literally the last dagger I gambled on this ended up having this aspect. I got so lucky. I was so <laughs> I never thought I'd be so excited to get an aspect. Then 391 after 40 attempts of trying out this bursted aspect, uh, bur bursted venom aspect, I was finally able to get Lila down to less than 50% life. Another huge milestone for me. And then attempt 412, I was so close to staggering Lila by below 50%, which have likely allowed me to get her down to one third life. But I died, as you can see. And then, <laughs> over the next 200 attempts, attempt 615, I improved my ability to time the stagger while the toxic pool is active. This allowed me to spam poison imbuement with Twisted Blades. In addition, once staggered, the additional damage to crowd control enemies comes into play, allowing you to significantly do more damage in that 10 second stagger window. Then attempt 690, I came incredibly close to killing Lilith in phase 1. Then 45 runs later, or attempts later, I came close once again. S attempt 767, I finally managed to complete phase 1 of Uber Lilith. However, I had no idea what to do in phase 2 and got one shot once again. This time by these like demonic spirits, I don't know if that's the name, but that's what I'm calling them. Attempt 975. The next 200 attempts, I continued doing some dungeons and health tides to get further upgrade my gear and level up my poison damage type glyphs and just get some more gold for the repair bills. And this improved my loot Uber Lilith kill speed a ton. So I was actually able to attempt phase 2 a lot more and learn the, the mechanics of it. Attempt 990. Even if I didn't get the first stagger timed correctly, I also got better and at finishing phase 1 regardless of the stage. Attempt 1000, <laughs> uh, less dying also allowed me more attempts before my 20% uh, increase attack speed elixir ran out. And I started improving my timing at the start of phase 2 and got Lilith down below 2 third life. However, I still didn't figure out how to avoid those one shot spirits. Attempt 10, uh, 1010, um, I destroyed Uber Lilith in phase 1 with ease. and. I tried focus on avoiding the spirits in phase 2, but they got me once again. 100 attempts later. At this point, I had my glyphs all above level 15, and I found this amazing amulet that I was able to enchant to get plus 3 imbuement skills and plus 3 frigid finesse. Um, this allowed me to get 12 ranks of poison imbuement and 6 ranks of frigid finesse, and the frigid finesse allows you to deal 60% increased damage to frozen enemies. And this is huge because when a boss is staggered, they're considered to have all crowd controls, they would otherwise be immune to, including frozen, stunned, slowed, etc. The second part of attempt 1113, uh, this is the first time I basically got Lilith down to zero life in both phases. However, in phase two, I learned you can't kill her until you go through the mechanics of the final phase, even if you get her down to zero. Um, so in the second part, or the second phase, I avoided the first spirit wave for the first time by standing on the opposite side of the blood boils that shoot them. However, I didn't pay attention to the second bl blood boil spawn and died again. Attempt 1120. I finally perfected the timing of the stagger and had my fastest phase 1 kill yet. 
1267, phase two, I did a ton of damage, but I think I ran into a glitch and then I don't know what happened and I had to restart. <laughs> four runs or four attempts later, I improved my spirit escape ability by running around the outside of the platform and dashing when needed. However, jumped the platform a second too early and died again. 100 attempts later, 1390. I was. This is probably my, my closest attempt by far. I should have dashed past the blood boil at the end, but tried to squeeze her instead to save the dash, and I died. Instantly once again, and 1391. I literally thought I had it this time, but yet another mechanic I never experienced before. I don't even know what you call it. Um, it just one shot me from the ground. Um, and then finally, 1393. I timed the phase one stagger perfectly. And once the stagger bar reached the, the one in the 100 of level 100 of um, Uber Lilith, like a uh, name bar, I continued to spam poison into you and twisted blades. It was also important to hold Ted and stay still to get that 30% extra damage bonus from my aspect. And immediately after phase 11, or <laughs> phase one, I'm losing it, I started. Uh, dropping a few poison traps as I do increase damage to enemies affected by traps So I wanted to do as much as I could to them and uh, uber Lilith in phase 2 and In addition the poison trap triggers uh, the knockdown which adds some CC to the stagger bar I got a bit unlucky as the bursting venom pool didn't trigger immediately So I wasn't able to use as many poison imbued twisted blades during the stagger as I would have liked in any case This seemed to actually help me because I staggered a little again and didn't have to deal with blood boils um, shooting out those spirits. This made staggering a third time a lot easier as all I needed to do was time the platform jumps correctly. Once Lilith dropped down in the middle I was able to stagger for the third time and finish the fight. I'll be honest, I was expecting much better loot for the, all this effort. All I got was two vendorable items and a mount skin I don't really care about. But in a way the real reward to me was a relief, a relief that I never have to do this again. So this might be ending my uh, Diablo 4 career, honestly. I want to go back to Diablo 2 Resurrected. Um, but I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. And if you want to see my Uber Lilith build, including stats, skills, gear, Paragon, I will uh, put it at the end of this video. So there's a lot of things that I want to uh, would want to add to Diablo 4, but uh, that's for another video. And I probably won't be playing it until a lot of these things are, are changed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And my build is, n is in the... Uh, the description below. Thanks for watching. So I just finished Uber Lilith and I'm left with 7 million, almost 8 million gold. So I'll go over my stats, my gear, my skills, and my Paragon board for you guys. So starting with the stats here, um, almost 30% critical strike chance. 130% vulnerable damage, 153% all damage, 200% damage versus close, 162% damage versus healthy, 204% damage with poison, 163% damage with core, and damage with imbued, and then 14.6k life. Almost 6,000 armor, 9% dodge chance, which helps a little bit on the damage mitigation. And this as well, dodge chance against close enemies. So, I don't have much damage reduction on this build. 12%. I get some from the uh, the Dark Shroud, which I'll show in a, in a minute. But um, I had just enough so I could put the rest into like offensive type abilities. And then 154% movement speed. And that's the stats. Six, you got the strength, intelligence, willpower, and then mostly dexterity. So for the gear, this is the, the main one here. So for the helm, I have the four ranks of poison imbuement, dexterity, attack speed, um, which helps me get the dark shroud and, and the stagger up. The more quickly you attack, the more likely you'll, or more quickly you'll stagger. And the crowd control duration also in, improves the uh, the, sta the rate is at which you stagger the uh, the boss. I have this imprinted here, the um, 
enemies poisoned by poison and imbuement will be further chilled for 20 per, uh 20 per second but really the the benefit of this is the 22 percent damage i i deal additional poison damage to frozen enemies so when lilith is staggered it counts as frozen as well as other uh, craft control so that additional damage definitely helps and then i just went uh rubies on leaves for max life because uh i want as much as possible for uh, one of the skills that restores life, which I'll show when I go to the skills. Armor here. Um, imbued skill damage, max life, and then damage reduction from close, and damage with dual wield weapons. This, is, this allows me to get um, Dark Shroud without needing to use it in my, my bar. So I could use actually Poison Trap instead of using Dark Shroud, which allows me to, because I attack so quickly, I have a pretty much a 60% chance on lucky hit chance uh, with my puncture, or basically the basic skill, to generate these Dark Shrouds. And Dark Shroud is, it's only, I only have one point in it, but when you have them all five protective shadows, you get 8% per, so that's 40% damage reduction, and that's pretty critical. Um, when dealing with, with Lilith, because uh, she even does a decent amount of damage with the melee attacks. Gloves. Now, this is probably the key one you might have, got, so have seen this if you've seen other uh, Lilith videos for with rogues. The lucky hit chance to daze, immobilize, is critical for the stagger. I've tried other gloves, but, I mean, this one by far increases the stagger meter the most uh, most quickly. In addition, the attacks dealing 1% to 280% damage is like 40%. Um, basically, you're dealing 140% damage if you want to just average it out. Um, but I've, I've seen that I've done more damage with this, but I mainly use it for the, the stagger. The pants I have here, max life, damage reduction, uh, dodge chance, and poison trap. Not The poison trap's not really necessary, but um, I, it was helpful when I was doing some uh, dungeon runs. But your main damage comes from poison imbuement, not necessarily the poison trap. And then basic skills grant 20% damage reduction for 6 seconds. This is another key one for me to uh, mitigate the damage from uh, the melee attacks. And also there's like a fire attack that deals some damage. That Lilith does, and then the uh, potion grants thirty percent max life as a barrier, which is helpful as well, just in case you know the melee attacks connect and I'm down to like 10 20 percent. This is another one that's that's pretty beneficial. I mean, the evade grabs seventy five percent movement speed, which allows you to uh, kind of avoid the waves if you run out of dash charges. Uh, the movement speed is is key, and the crowd control duration is also beneficial. And in addition, you leave behind a trail of frost that chills enemies. And this helps the stagger meter a little bit. This one was uh, a key as well, mainly for the you know, vulnerable damage and the uh, all stats, which helped me get the, the second bonus on the paragons, which I'll show at the end of this video. And the aspect of imbuing skill effects have 76% increased potency against vulnerable enemies. So basically, this makes them vulnerable, or Uber Lilith vulnerable, and then I do uh, a ton more damage with my poison imbuement. Amulet, this is probably the, the final key to my build here. Tons of damage, plus I get 20% movement speed, which is, which is key for avoiding the waves. And three to all imbuement skills, I used strength because, again, it helps, helps me um, in the Paragon get that second bonus for that extra strength. But the three, the, the Frigid Finesse, gives me more damage to Frozen. And when Lilith is staggered, it counts as Frozen as well. So I could do up to 60% damage. And I'll show that in the skills afterwards. In addition, uh, to increase my attack speed, critical strikes with core skills increase my attack speed by 35%. For five seconds, which is key for so many things, from the stagger to uh, being able to get more dark shrouds on myself because I attack more quickly, and just being able to do more damage, more attacks, everything. You know, it's just beneficial in all ways. 
and I have armor on here because I didn't see the resistances were too important. On the ring, critical strike chance, max life. Uh, I would like some lucky hit chance, but I mean, this is beneficial as it is. Uh, max life, damaged enemies affected by trap skills, damage to close enemies, and then I always hold tab uh, because I'll if for three seconds I stand still, I'll deal 30% more damage with everything, including twisted blades and poison imbuement. And for this one, I got some lucky hit chance, critical strike, damage to close enemies, imbued skill damage, and twisting blades as well. Now, I didn't fool around, but maybe I could swap this for something else for more stagger, but uh, it seemed to work well. Ashira's Kanjar for the attack speed. Mainly, you get a lucky hit chance, um, but I mainly need it for the 28, 29% increase attack speed. And then, probably the key to this build, the uh, Bursting Venoms, which allows you to pretty much use Poison Imbuement infinitely. And then the damage to close enemies, all stats, uh, critical strike with imbued skills, and dexterity. So that's the, uh, the gear. I went over the stats, now for the skills. Now this is I, probably the reason I spent a lot of gold this and the Paragon. I was like tweaking different things to see what worked. Um, but essentially I went with Puncture with the um, energy gain and making him vulnerable. Max Twisting Blades. This one, they changed this <laughs> halfway through my runs where it's lucky hit. It used to be um, just Critical Strikes have a chance to heal. So I had to tweak my build even more and get more lucky hit chance to be able to even even get this. Um, I actually, you could max this out if you're, you're taking too much damage, but I, I found like I only needed a couple points in this with my other damage reduction. Shadow step for the stun to help uh, the stagger bar increase more quickly. And dash. Um, I don't know why I didn't swap this out. I was using this more for my uh, dungeon running. But you really only need one point in dash. You don't need these two. Instead, I put them into uh, just more damage. So, for example, weapon mastery, I would say. Or you could put it into malice for vulnerable damage. And actually, you want to do your most damage when they're staggered. So I put them into to malice for more damage. Um... One to dash, as I mentioned. One into Dark Shroud, and then I, I I was using Critical Strike Chance, but I found that I was doing enough Critical Strike damage, or Strike Chance, um, so I decided I needed more movement speed to avoid the waves, but you could mix and match this depending on what your build requires. Poison Trap with uh, at 10% increased damage for enemies standing in your trap. Maxed out Exploit, maxed out Malice. Max Poison Imbuement, this is the critical part of the build. And then critical strikes with poison and imbued skills deal 75% increased poison damage. And you get 9% increased poison damage from Deadly Venom. And as I mentioned before, I maxed this one out for 60% more damage against frozen enemies, which is why one staggered the, the poison ticks um, are so huge. After around, I would say, uh, as I mentioned earlier, like once a, the Uber level is around like the 100 mark, like where the shows level 100, that's when I start just doing tons of damage, stagger, and then you see the the poison just drain the life so quickly. I've maxed out this for as much lucky hit chance as I can because the lucky hit chance is for the stagger as well as um, siphoning strikes as well as getting my dungeon, uh, getting my dark shroud up as quickly as possible. But Second Wind, Alchemist Fork, Fortune, Innervation, and then Haste for more attack speed. And I use Close Quarters for the attack speed as well, and some bonus damage to crowd control. So that is the skill. And to the Paragon. So <laughs> if I had to redo this, I would go back and, and see what the ideal one is and see what the ideal specs are. But I had to rework my whole Paragon board. And you could see I'm not using some of these legendaries because I was using a lot of these for 
the AOE with my Shadow Imbuement build for the dungeon running, but I had a respec and a lot of this might be wasted, but I had a respec with the current boards I had rather than undoing all of them and redoing them again. It would cost me a ton of gold. So I just respect what I needed to. So in any case, uh, I started off here with Tracker and it's not maxed. It's only level 15, but it was just enough to get the uh, it expanded to the radius max size. But this is for the damage to poison enemies. Uh, 20% damage here and 20% more damage here. I swapped out a lot of the like the armor and life I had originally just for more damage. Going up here, uh, damage to crowd control. Damage to crowd control, cutthroat skill damage. Closer because this dam deals damage with my cutthroat skills. Um, and I could take less damage which was helpful. Now this one, I kind of left. There might be a better one to use, like the imbuement one. Um, like imbued skills or... I got to see where the... Um, This one here, Imbuement Skill Effects have 20% increased damage. You could always use this one too. Um, and then you get 40% bonus all rare nodes. But I don't want to level up another glyph, so I just left this one as is. And that's the Cutthroat Skill Damage. As I mentioned, dam damage to crowd control. And over here was uh, damage to healthy enemies. We'll go to the left over here. Damage to healthy enemies again. 20% damage. Bane for more poison damage and the 10% chance to deal double amount of damage over the duration for poison damage. And I actually added a little bit of life here for max 8% uh, max, max life. Going to the right here. Core skill damage. Core skill damage. And turf, which I deal almost 100% more damage to close enemies. And I get damage reduction from close enemies. This I added a little bit of armor uh, just because I wanted to get the, mine as well, because I wanted to get the extra strength for the, as much damage to close enemies as possible. Going down here, uh, the reason I have so many uh, extra stats on my gear is for this, like it, it's pretty costly, 735 dexterity, but I want to do more damage to elites. And this is probably the only legendary I was able to use. Uh, whenever you deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, they take 1% increased damage from you for 6 seconds. And Puncture makes them vulnerable, so makes Uber Lilith vulnerable. So you're basically doing up to 15% more damage. And I barely had enough intelligence, so I have a lot of gear that gives me um, that extra stats, as I mentioned before, for more vulnerable damage. Same thing here. Same thing here, and then I'm using Canny, which is more uh, non-physical damage, which is the mainly for the poison imbue. And non-physical damage increases up to 10% uh, more damage to Uber Lilith. Finally down here, this is another one I'm using as um, Eldritch Bounty for the 20% increased damage for poison imbuement. And more imbued skill damage. And as you can see, it's 870 dexterity and 620 strength required. So I need a lot of stats to be able to use this one. Again, this is for poison imbuement. And yeah, I mean, that's that's everything. Stats, gear, skills, paragon. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope we gave you some tips. And um, for the elixir, I was using the attack speed. And for the specialization I was using combo points so that that is it thanks for watching and feel free to comment if you have any questions or comments below